Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? We have a crescent moon that is waxing, so it is getting larger over in the western sky that will uh, then impinge into the southern and overhead sky. So we're going to spin way over to the north and look at Ursa Major, actually a little bit more towards the northeast. Uh, and kind of overhead away from the moon so we'll have the moon behind us while we're looking in this area of the sky uh, there's the seven bright stars of the dipper or plow as my viewers over in the uk might also call this shape uh, this particular star megrez is at the point between where the handle and the bowl of what the dipper shape would be is and that star is a type a spectral class star so it's a very white star uh, and it's gonna be pretty easy for you to see if we center that we can zoom in on that area and see uh, what we have happening in this part of the sky now I know that it's kinda cold and people don't want to spend too much time outside while it is cold to observe but this one is uh, a neat area to look at so you can start actually with some binoculars if you don't want to spend too much time out there and look for Megrez, and then you'll see these stars in that particular area. Now, there's not a whole lot of variety of these brighter stars uh, kind of hanging around around here. We have a an M-class star, which should offer a nice contrast with Megrez because Megrez is white. An M-class star is a red star, so you should see uh, at least a, a deep orange color. Then we've also got um, another M-class star, so definitely look at those. This particular star is a K-class star, so kind of close to that M. Look and see if you've got a little bit of a color contrast or not. Now notice 5.5, 5.8, 5.7. These are all very similar in brightness, so you should be able to see any differences uh, fairly easily. Megrez is a little bit brighter at 3.3. Uh, and as we go over here, we have another A-class star uh, like Megrez to get, offer a nice contrast, but it is 5.4. So you can kind of compare these three stars with this one uh, and look at those color differences. And then this star right out here, uh, we've got a G-class star. G-class is like our sun. Uh, this star's larger than our sun is, but it should be about the same color. So that would be an interesting contrast to look at the A-class and the G-class star there and see if you see the subtle color differences. Because again, pretty close in brightness, uh, 6.05 and 5.35. This will be a little bit brighter, but you might be able to see that. But what we're actually looking for is uh, now I've shown you all the stars that you'd be looking for in the general area in that shape. So you notice that there's these three stars, Megrez over here, and then these two stars here. We're going to go from Megrez in the direction of where these two stars are uh, at the end of this line. And we're going to just go past this star to this right here. And that is, well, it's just a, a 9.7 magnitude star. And that doesn't seem very exciting. And quite honestly, it isn't necessarily, except for the fact that it also happens to be a Messier object, believe it or not. M40 is right there, also known as Winnec 4. Now, why is M40 just a star? Well, that's because Messier was looking for what he thought was a nebulous-type object in this particular area that he thought uh, was supposed to be there based on what uh, Johann Hevelius had said. And so he was looking... And he didn't find it and perhaps his optics were just bad maybe his eye was just had something in it that night I don't know but he misidentified this as being something that was nebulous and it's not if we zoom in we can see we have a double star so we got a 9.7 magnitude star and we have a 10.1 magnitude star nothing terribly special about them they're actually pretty easy to resolve because they're nice and far apart when we measure that distance uh, it's a good 53, I believe it's 53 uh, arc seconds apart. And uh, so that's e simple <laughs> to resolve in most any telescope, even at fairly low power. You don't need a lot of magnification to do that. But it is a Messier object. It's sometimes called Messier's mistake. So uh, you might be able to see why, but uh, try and resolve it with binoculars first if you can. I mean, 53, it really, I, I have that 50. Six, but that really is at about 53, I believe, is the correct distance uh, that those are at. 
You might be able to do that with binoculars, just barely. If not, just use low magnification with a telescope and check out this particular area over in Ursa Major uh, as that particular constellation rises up uh, here in the late portion of winter as we move in towards spring. And um, this one shouldn't be too difficult to see. I think uh, for most of us, uh, the most difficult aspect of this might be just the fact that they are uh, nearly 10th magnitude stars. So hopefully you'll be able to pick those out among whatever your light pollution conditions happen to be where you are at. And that's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.